Okay, so let's take a look at what the point would be at 30 degrees. Now before we do that, um, before we figure out what the point on the unit circle is at 30 degrees, let's talk about how we're going to actually get there. So notice that at any point on the unit circle, we can actually draw a triangle between that, that forms by basically drawing a line down from our point and then over to the origin and then connecting those two points. We can see that the hypotenuse of this triangle is the radius and we've talked about this in the previous lesson. I just want to reiterate what we talked about. The hypotenuse is the radius and furthermore the width of the triangle is just the x value of the point and vice versa. The y value of the point is the height of the triangle and vice versa. So we use trigonometry to figure out the point on the circle and that's what kind of makes the unit circle complex. Yes, it's nothing more than a bunch of points on a circle that have different values for different angles. We figure out those points using trigonometry and we're going to be using the 30, 45, and 60 degree uh, trig ratios that we learned in previous lessons. So make sure you have a really good grasp on those. All right, so what I've kind of done here is just zoomed in on the first quadrant, and we're going to go ahead and just start right at 30 degrees. So, you know, I don't know that this is exactly 30 degrees what I'm drawing, but we're just going to get as close as we can. Now remember that this angle, 30 degrees, that forms with the x-axis is the same, exactly the same, as that arc length right there. That's also considered 30 degrees. In other words, it's 30 out of 360 total parts of the triangle, uh, sorry, of the circle. Now, what we want to do though is we want to figure out what this point on the triangle is in terms of x and y. We want to figure out the x and y value of that point. Um, so it's kind of like a geometry problem and yet it's a trick problem because we have to use a triangle. Uh, to solve this. And that's what we're going to do. So we've already established that the x value is the width of this triangle. Okay, and the y value is the height of this triangle. Now, for right now, we're just going to say that the hypotenuse is 1, like we talked about in the 0 degree point. All right, um, But very soon, we will consider it to be r, meaning it can be as big or small as it wants to be, and then we'll show what the we'll show what the point looks like when it's r. So fortunately we've already figured out the trig ratios at 30 degrees. If you have any questions on that, go back and watch that lesson on trig ratios at 30. It'd be very helpful. Um, so for right now let's just figure out the x value of this point. Okay? And remember we we can, we can do that by finding the width of the triangle or the bottom. So in relation to 30 degrees that bottom is going to be the adjacent side, right? A. And so we already know the hypotenuse of the triangle because it's the same as the radius which we said was 1. So we can use a simple trig ratio to set this up. What involves adjacent and hypotenuse? Well, if you said cosine, you are correct. Okay, so let me just write out the definition of cosine for those of you who need some refreshing. Okay, now going back to that triangle we just drew inside of our unit circle, um, we know that the adjacent side is simply the x value of our point, right? This right here is going to give you give us the x value of this point. This is why we drew it on the coordinate plane to begin with. So a then is just going to be x. Okay, and we just mentioned, and uh, you know it's pretty obvious to see, the radius is the hypotenuse, which is one. So we're just going to plug in one for the hypotenuse. Oops. Okay. And I meant to put um, 30 degrees in there because that's what our angle is, right? So let's just use 30 for our angle. Okay. So uh, 
hey, what is cosine of 30? We already proved that no matter how big or small the triangle is, right, it's always what? It's always square root of 3 over 2, right? So I'm going to replace cosine of 30 with square root of 3 over 2, and that's still equal to x over 1. Now notice, though, anything divided by 1 is itself. So x over 1 is just x. So we have x is equal to square root of 3 over 2. And we could have used sec secant for that, right, to, to, to prove that, but cosine is generally simple, simpler. So the first value of our point, or the x value, is square root of 3 over 2. Pretty simple, right? Now to figure out the y value, we know that we can label the opposite side opposite, right? We'll just call it O. Well, I'm not even going to do it here. Here's our opposite side right here. Okay. Hypotenuse is still 1. What trig function involves opposite hypotenuse? The answer is sine. And again, for those of you who need refreshing, whoops, sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Now in this case, it's 30 degrees we're talking about. So we have sine of 30 equals now, we said that the height of the triangle is y, correct? Going this way. So um, it's just going to be the y value of our point. Hypotenuse is still 1 because it's the radius. But we've proven that sine of 30 is 1 half. So we have 1 half equal to y over 1. So 1 half equals y. And that's going to be the other part of our point. Okay, and that's because that's one half. Going back uh, to my unit circle touch up, if we go ahead and touch 30 degrees, it will give us that exact point on the unit circle. We'll talk a little bit later about this pi over 6. We haven't learned radians yet. But there you go. There's the, the point on the unit circle at 30 degrees. Now the real question is though, what happens if instead of this being 1, this is equal to r, as we talked about making the radius as big or small as we want it to be. Okay, so let's just assume the radius is as big or small as it wants to be. 10, 20, 50 feet, meters, miles, whatever. So what would happen is this would still be the x value and this would still be the y value, but in order to find the x value, the, the hypotenuse has changed from 1 to r. So it would be cosine of 30 equals x over r. Cosine of 30 is still square root of 3 over 2. And this time, though, we have to multiply both sides by r to get x by itself. The r's would cancel, and you get x equals square root of 3 over 2 r. Okay? So in that case, that would be our x value. We can do a similar proof for sine. Give me a second. So instead of having 1 for the radius, we would have just r, meaning any big any size radius, sine of 30 is still 1 half. Just like cosine, we would multiply both sides by r to get r to the denominator. You're going to see that, well, you, you can see now that that's going to happen every time because when we set the hypotenuse equal to the radius, you're going to have an r on the bottom, and by multiplying both sides by r, you're always going to have an r as part of your coordinate. So the y value of uh, your point at 30 degrees with any size radius is one half r, which means that when we go to label this point now with a radius that can be any size, okay, the x value would be square root of three over two r, which would be about again if if the radius was ten, then square root of three over two r would be about eight point five, okay, and the y value would be half of ten, be about five. Okay, but the radius can be as big or small as it wants to be, and there you go. That would be your point. And so, you know, really, like I said before, the unit circle, as far as being more authentic to me or more applicable, is when the radius can be however big it wants to be. Your units are radians, and that's what a radian is. It's how big the radius is, no matter how big it is. So here's what that point would look like with the radius of r, but I guess we use 1 to assume, which I don't think it's good to assume, but to assume that square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half uh, mean radians, 
mean you take that number and multiply it by the size of the radius to get that point. So there's the point at 30 degrees explained in terms of 1 and in terms of R. And in the next lesson, we'll take a look at 45 degrees. If you have any other questions about this lesson, let me know.